okay do click follow button for msme talk on the platform where you are listening to get notification for the next episode release For example, Ola Electric, the country's largest wheeler EV company, set up its factory in Tamil Nadu, the hub of auto. Similarly, Bajaj has chosen Pune, the region where its existing facilities are. But there are companies like Okinawa which has a factory in Rajasthan or VE Commercial Vehicles located in Indore who have started at completely newer locations. Let us understand where exactly are the automobile clusters situated in India. This is episode number 37 of MSME Talk on EV landscape for Indian MSMEs. Welcome back to MSME Talk podcast for micro small medium enterprise businesses and startups. MSME Talk bring value addition guidance, products, services, industry experts and information to scale up and build unshakable long lasting business so please don't miss to hit follow or subscribe button also do sign up for newsletter for more information and update link given in description Hello MSME Talk listeners I am Swapnil your today's host in-house economist and researcher at MSME Talk we are exploring different opportunities for MSMEs in auto industry in the current scenario Before we dive into today's topic don't forget to check out our episode on 75 year journey of MSMEs in Indian auto industry it's a quick but insightful look at the past and sets the stage for our current discussion today and yes there's a small reminder to subscribe to our newsletter whose link will be given in the description so EVs or electric vehicles are a big theme that is in buzz right now in auto sector today we will explore it from the angle of MSMEs In India EV sales are increasing year on year in financial year 2018 that from April 2017 to March 2018 more than 95000 EVs were sold around 97% of them were three wheeler in FY23 11.8 lakh EVs were sold and of them 62% were two wheeler this shows that EV adoption in India is rising and especially for personal mobility according to the data from ministry of road transport and highways the indian ev market is projected to grow at 49% cagr between 2022 to 2030 and is expected to hit 10 million unit annual sales by 2030 however in general the targets have not been met niti ayog had set a target of 1 lakh e per month in fy20 but on average we sold around 1000 units for FY24 the target has been increased to 1.9 lakh EVs per month and we have achieved close to 72000 units on average although many policies like PLI that is production linked incentive and fame are in place the targets are ambitious as of now but one thing there is a sense of urgency in increasing the adoption of cleaner fuel thus the government and the auto industry are trying different ways to attract consumers not only that the central government and many state governments have designed ev policies not just for consumers but also for manufacturers of ev oems and ev components almost all states have announced some or the other promoting their incentives include subsidizing the purchase of evs exemptions in certain fees providing electricity for charging batteries at discounted rates capital subsidies for manufacturing evs research and development etc however going by simple economics the regions with existing auto related infrastructure and businesses will be the first to get investment for example ola electric the country's largest two wheeler ev company set up its factory in tamil nadu the hub of auto similarly bajaj has chosen pune the region where its existing facilities are but there are companies like okinawa which has a factory in rajasthan or ve commercial vehicles located in indore who have started at completely newer locations let us understand where exactly are the automobile clusters situated in india so the traditional clusters are situated across zones like first is delhi gudgaon faridabad that is the northern india situated across delhi and haryana states second is mumbai pune nashik and aurangabad in maharashtra state third 
Chennai, Bengaluru, Hosur, that is in southern India, situated in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu state. Fourth, Jamshedpur to Kolkata, which are in Jharkhand and West Bengal. And fifth, Sanand, Hansalpur and Vit in Gujarat state. Now, let us look at EV clusters. They are more scattered and depend on different processes and equipments. So, first comes EV manufacturing, which is in Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Haryana. Second is battery manufacturing, which is located across Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Telangana. Third is charging infrastructure manufacturing which is located in Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. Fourth is R&D, which is largely in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Fifth is other equipment manufacturing, which is in Karnataka, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. And sixth is EV fleet as a service, which is in Uttar Pradesh. And here are some more clusters for EV manufacturing it. Now let's start with electric two-wheelers. Here are the clusters. Gurugram, Sanan, Bengaluru, Chennai, Hosur, Hyderabad, Bhivadi, Nashik, Chakan and Krishnagiri. Electric three-wheelers are in Baramati. Electric car manufacturing happens mostly in Bangalore, Chennai, Chakan, Nashik, Sanan and Halol area. And lastly, electric buses which is concentrated mainly in Hyderabad, Dharwad, Dharuhera and Faridabad. Why knowing these clusters is important? Firstly, in case your business is in these areas, you have opportunities to cater to this industry directly or indirectly. And secondly, in case you want to explore this sector, then this is where you have to start. Now let's see which exact stage you can fit in. First, it is important to understand which are the most important parts of an EV. So here are the main parts which are motor, battery, ACDC converter and semiconductor. So the direct opportunities lie if you can provide these types of products and components used in these main parts. Now there are other parts which you can provide and they are battery pack which contains battery cells and packaging systems, controllers, battery thermal management systems and onboard battery charging. Next is power electronics and distribution where Power management systems, wiring harness, connectors, jacketing, DC converters, relays, power cable charger, all things can be provided. Then next is electric motor, where traction motor, motor controller, cooling system for motor, all these things are used. Then the next is transmission, differential transmission, fixed gear transmission, integrated gearbox, all those things can be covered. Then other things. Uh, include system integration, collision protection, electric power steering, brakes, EV AC and heating, retrofitment and all the other technical things. Uh, this apart, there are few things where you can add value and those are connectors, sensors, charging equipment, charging stations, charging services, aftermarket retrofitment, battery swapping, battery recycling and fleet services which is nothing but becoming an Ola or Uber, but riding only EVs. So these were direct opportunities. However, there are plethora of indirect opportunities, such as all these companies, big or small, OEMs or component manufacturers will need software and software services. They will need websites of their own and thus web designers. They will also need cyber protection and therefore web security type of at the same any workers will also need a good place to have lunch and therefore canteens and restaurants can also be a good way to tap this opportunity. This apart there will be need for more residential units as well as commercial units and that is another way where you can play an important role. So you can imagine the indirect ways in which you can serve this industry or get benefits by the rise of this industry. But what are the challenges? The first and foremost is the constant changes in the technology. A simple example is the battery technology. Some batteries are swappable, some charge fast, which is instant, while some need overnight charging. So any change in technology in the smallest of the smallest parts can have a deeper impact on the performance. But that also means business owners must remain up to date. Second is the regulation. The regulatory environment related to anything that is new takes time to sink into the system. Sometimes it takes several years for a government scheme to take off even after providing ample financial support from the government. Therefore, that is another thing that you must be very cautious of. So, that's the end of this episode. 
do let us know how did you find this information do share with us how are you planning to encash opportunities in this segment in case you are serving msmes share your expertise with us you can reach out to us through our email id connect at msmetalk.com also if you have still not subscribed to our msme talk podcast don't miss to hit the subscribe or follow button now also our newsletter is not to be missed as it holds much more information apart from the podcast so see you in the next episode thank you hey if you like the information shared on the podcast why don't you give some good reviews to us on apple or spotify through this episode i hope you would have got some answers to your queries and guidance for way forward do share your learnings from the episode your feedbacks and suggestions if you are an entrepreneur and have questions from experts or any particular topic or profile of expert you want to hear or if you are an industry expert with msme as a target audience do reach out to us our link is given in description and at last please do subscribe for msme talk podcast and don't forget to share the podcast link with your friends family and network Take care. Goodbye. Happy to share MSME Top Podcast and the Speak Ranking Chart of 10th Country in the Apple Podcast Country Level Entrepreneurship Category. If you are an expert or provide product or services to small businesses, MSMEs, and startups, reach out to us to discuss. Showcase opportunity in MSME Talk. Contact details given in description.